Hey and welcome back. I have an upcoming project on the channel and I'll need to machine the part directly on the mill table. And to be able to do that, I need to be able to clamp the workpiece down to the table and not have it fly off. Now the most common way of doing that would be to use a clamp of some type in conjunction with the T-slots. And this method works fine, but the most obvious drawback is using this method, you can't machine the entire top surface at once. So as you machine the part, you will need to play musical chairs with the clamps and move them around so you can machine the part. A great alternative would be to use a toe clamp of some type, but if you want to make it yourself, there is a fair amount of machining involved, such as machining a captive grub screw in some of the designs, and that really is a lot more than I'd personally want to do, especially for something as simple as a table clamp. The big advantage to toe clamps though, is that it produces a downwards clamping force, as well as a sidewards clamping force. This in theory should help stop the part from moving upwards and lifting off the table. Now the design I came up with should work in a similar fashion to other toe clamps, but it should be a lot easier to make in the home workshop. I'm a bit limited on stock this week, but a piece of 50 by 20 steel bar should work just fine for the jaws, and I also have a piece of scrap metal which I'll machine up to serve as a very basic angle plate. The first thing I'll machine up is the angle block. The angle that I'm going for is not hugely critical, but I'm going for something roughly in the region of 10 degrees. With the angle block now made up, I can now face and then clean up the other two parts. Before machining the final face, I'll place the stock on the angle blocks to tilt it in the vise and hold it at that 11.5 degree angle. And these are the two parts done. I machined the other half off camera just to fit this one. It really isn't anything too difficult. The second set of dovetails are about 0.2 millimeters bigger to allow for a really nice sliding action. The final thing left to do is drill and counterbore a hole for a socket head cap screw.
And that is the part done. So let's go clamp something down and see if it works. I'll be using the two clamps as a sort of fixture to clamp up against. They're a little bit tall for this workpiece, but it's only a test. Next I'll slide in two T-nuts. The back jaw is clamped in first, and I'll make sure that the moving jaw is a few millimetres off the table. Next, the moving jaw is screwed down, and as the cap screw tightens, the jaw moves forwards and downwards, applying a force in both directions. And even though I'm only using one clamp, it does a fantastic job at keeping the workpiece in place. It is a bit tall to be used on this work. I did design it to be used on a much bigger workpiece, but if I needed to, I could shave five or 10 millimeters off the height of this and it would still work just fine. Also, because these are unhardened, they will pick up a bit of wear as you use them. Personally, I don't think it's necessary, but if you really wanted to, you could harden them if you wanted to. As a final note, I will leave a link to a very basic e-drawing of the part. If the size doesn't suit your setup or tooling, feel free to change it, but it should be a very good starting point for you to base your design off. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.